Welcome back to Typecast Heroes, where we believe typology can save the world. I'm Amanda Fogelson. And I'm Jesse Miller. And today we are going to be talking to you about the inferior function as you have inferior introverted feeling. So that is the ESTJs and the ENTJs. And the inferior function is a fun one. Um, this is the one that we tend to feel defensive, embarrassed, or vulnerable about. We know that we should be good at them, but mm -hmm. we're not good at them. Um, unlike the parent function when we know we should be good at it and we are good at it, mm -hmm. this is something that we know we should be and we're not. Um, so ESTJs and ENTJs, it's okay to be a little uncomfortable with this. It can happen from time to time. I can. But once you lean into it, I think you'll like it, right? No. <laughs> One can hope. So as we say at the beginning of every video, anyone can be anything. And while we are not suddenly disagreeing with that statement, what we do want to clarify for these specific videos is that yes, while anyone can be and do anything that they want, there is consistency across ESTJs and ENTJs on what FI looks like in the inferior function. And it's going to look a little different, present itself a little differently than it would in the other positions in the cognitive stack. And that's really what we want to bring light to today. That being said, remember that this is all about the motivation behind the behavior. That is key. That is what we really want to push in these videos. There can be infinite behaviors that present in a certain way, like Amanda was saying, but this is looking for the motivations behind it. And also we will be referring to what Carl Jung called the ideal average, ideal type average. If you are a normal person going through normal type development. So that means if you're in the middle of your life, this is probably going to look a lot different than if you were a teenager, mm -hmm. you don't change type. You do your type evolves. Innate hardwired tendencies take a long time to undo if they are hardwired into you. So if you are an ENTJ or an ESTJ who's in the middle of your life and you're looking backwards, you should be able to recognize these behaviors as something you did in your younger years, assuming that you had a normal development mm -hmm. and nothing seriously knocked you off your type development. So just keep all of that in mind as we go through this. So as mentioned, the inferior function is something that we all of us who have every single person has inferior functions mm -hmm. and they are we de get defensive about it we get embarrassed about it we get um super vulnerable about it but we also sometimes especially as we get older it can be kind of like a relief to lean into our inferior functions so there are mm -hmm. positive things that can come from getting in touch with your inferior function and if you are on a journey of self-discovery or self-improvement, the inferior function is a good place to start because that is across the board, the one that people struggle with the most in the beginning of their journey before mm -hmm. they learn about all of the shadow and the other all things, the things that we will be discussing later. Um, so introverted feeling as it just presents, just hardcore introverted feeling. And there are so many resources on our channel about it. Uh, so many videos about introverted feeling, but as it just presents, if you were able to pull it out of all of the other things and just mm -hmm. look at it in a vacuum, it is when you decide what you value without logical reasons, without data, without anything. It's just, this is what makes sense to me. This is what I believe in. This is my value system. So it still presents like that for the inferior function for the ENTJ and the ESTJ. However, because it is their fourth function, it's introverted and ENTJ and ESTJ are extroverted. Mm -hmm. It's, introspective and feelings based when they are extroverting <laughs> and uh, thinking and thinking based mm -hmm. logic based it is sometimes very difficult for them to tap into this function so these are sorts of behaviors that can happen for an ESTJ and an ENTJ because it is their inferior function they don't always have the full emotional nuance that other functions would have higher up in their other users Actually. would have higher up in their stack so that means that when they present emotions, if they present emotions, they probably have a very short range of emotions mm -hmm. that they present. And extroverted feelers in particular are judgy of this type because they're like, you are not presenting emotions the way that you should be presenting emotions because the ENTJ and the ESTJ will have a very unique way that they react to things or that they show emotions. And so the extroverted feelers don't even realize that the ESTJ or the ENTJ are showing an emotional response unless it's a very hardcore, like, in your outburst. face, screaming yeah. emotional response. So they'll say that their 
unhinged or that they don't have good control over their emotions because in reality what's happening for the inferior introverted feeling function that is really hard to say yes. inferior <laughs> introverted feeling function is that it doesn't have a wide range it doesn't understand the full nuance because the brain of the ENTJ ESTJ does not spend a whole lot of time there so it, in, it is the beginning of our unconscious functions so it is something that they're not always quite adept at using so some of the behaviors you can expect to see in the introverted feeling users in addition to what was just mentioned is the fact that they will project their own embarrassment and um, their own insecurities about yeah. introverted feeling onto others so they will have a tendency to say i'm not a bad person i'm not a person without integrity you're a person without integrity because they don't want to have to look at themselves and say i haven't really developed my introverted feeling function i haven't really looked into it I don't really know what I stand for. So instead of doing that, I'm going to project. And we all do this. Introverted yeah. feeling functions make everyone project. But this is the one of the biggest sources of projection for the ENTJ and the ESTJ is that they will be like, you are the one, sir. Yeah. You're the one who, and it's almost who doesn't know yourself. And it's almost like a reaction. Like, any, like, it's almost like a defense that's like up. And so the second you say anything, it's, it's, that's going to be the first response. It's not something that they have to like think through. It's not, it's not something that's taught or learned. It's just organically how it's going to be until you focus on the mm -hmm. inferior function to strengthen it. Mm -hmm. And if you tell them that, if you tell an ENTJ or ESTJ, one of the best ways to hurt them, I don't know best ways to term, but one of the yeah. quickest ways to hurt them is to tell them that they don't have feelings or to tell them that they are um, a person without integrity because they mm -hmm. already probably know that. They already mm -hmm. know that they have they have work to do if they haven't worked on it already. And if they have worked on it, then that's even worse because yeah. they're like, man, now you're telling me that I'm an ineffective person and that yeah. sucks in general as well. Or some of these types will lean into that and be like, yeah, you're right. I don't care about anything at all. I don't care about you. I don't care about people. I don't care about humanity, blah, blah, blah. Also not true. It's <laughs> they just they have it. Yes. Yeah. And they may actually believe that if they, if mm -hmm. they, particularly if they're young, if they haven't taken the time to develop that function, they may literally believe that they don't have feelings, but, or if society keeps telling them that they don't, that they also may have, Yeah, they may mm -hmm. internalize that into their introverted feeling function. So some of the other things that can happen is as the ESTJ and ENTJ get older, they may want to start indulging in their introverted feeling a little more. So they may want to have like, they want to be interested in religion for the first time in their life or interested in a romance for the first time or really interested in, in understanding who they are as a person. But it can be really challenging for them because extroverted thinking as their parent or as their hero function can mm -hmm. be like, nope, what are you doing? None of this is worth our time. This is not worth our time at all. But it can almost feel like a release to them mm -hmm. because they've spent so much of their time getting things done that having a moment to look into yourself and figure out what makes sense to you can seem really peaceful and really meditative. It can also be really challenging, a whole lot of work. Yeah. But if you lean into that, like Amanda was saying earlier, mm -hmm. and you just kind of own it, it can be a really relaxing process for you. And that can kind of sometimes look like maybe a midlife crisis. And if you're younger and you're watching this, then run with it. <laughs> like take what we're saying and run with it. So that way you don't hit that all of a sudden you know, 20 years from now and you're like, wait, ha I actually have values and I believe in things and have I done anything to add to that? Mm -hmm. Or have I gone against it my entire life just because of a more efficient way to do things or a better way to do things? Mm -hmm. um, something else for them is that, again, because their range tends to not be so so large, is that they can have a very personal way of showing things like love to someone. And so ESTJs and ENTJs can show love in a way that's very personal to them and it's very unique to them. So it's not going to be a way that sometimes, it's not a way that society recognizes mm -hmm. as, oh, that is a loving action. It can be something like taking the time to explain to you why your ideas are invalid. Or it can be something like trying to make your system, like the way you organize your home or the way that you run a program, they can make it more efficient for you and they don't have to. It's not something like a job. It's just something that they're doing because they care about you. It's almost like a backhanded compliment. 
And those are probably created by ESTJs and ENTJs who actually loved somebody who's saying like, you look gorgeous today. If only you could. If only, yeah. If only that dress was red. Right? <laughs> you know, yes. something like or that. You would look so pretty mm -hmm. if that dress were red. That yeah. doesn't have to happen. No. But no. it's actually really funny because in the MBTI coffee house group, there was just a post about this, about how uh, ENTJs are super good at the ESTJs and ENTJs are super good at the backhanded compliments. Mm -hmm. But again, if they're showing their way that they show that they love you because they have an inferior FI, which is why this is so important and the language is so important, mm -hmm. inferior FI creates a limitation of emotional range and a very limited understanding of what society considers acceptable when it comes to emotional responses. So they are entitled to emotionally respond to things and you do not get to tell them that they are invalid because that's a mistake on your part, extroverted feelers. They also, when they have a healthy inferior FI, so we're gonna talk about that. Why does society need a healthy inferior FI? Because ESTJs and ENTJs tend to run the planet and we need them to have tapped into their inferior functions to make sure what they're doing is actually aligning mm -hmm. with their personal integrity. Because I assure you, you have it in there, you have it in, in you, ESTJs and ENTJs, you just have to tap into it to make sure that your actions align with your belief systems. And that you're not just like along for the ride and it, not even along for the ride. You're not running the ride with only your brain in the lead. Like you need to make sure that your heart is involved as well. That's metaphor metaphorically speaking. You don't do so good with the metaphors. I know. I know you don't. That's okay. Poor analogies. <laughs> like, poor, poor you guys. Okay. So, but you, I think you understood that what yeah. she meant there. So the other thing is that you can love things with a super deep intensity and because it's from your inferior function, you may not need so much justification to just go with it. Mm -hmm. And that can be valuable too. That means that you can be really strong in your belief system and really protective of your belief system. And you can stand up for what you think is right. And society desperately needs those types of people, particularly right now. So because introverted feeling tends to not have that whole nuance and that whole range, it can look like very sure of itself and very strong in its beliefs because it doesn't really have to question it that much because it's not, it doesn't spend a whole lot of time there, but that can be a good thing. If they've spent some time developing their belief systems and what they value, then they can go forth and get things accomplished with their extroverted thinking and their introverted feeling process can make sure that it aligns to a moral code and they're not going to be somebody who wants to discuss their values with you or their integrity. And so if they're somebody who's really done the work with their introverted feeling process, then they're going to be very sure of themselves and very confident in their beliefs. And the world really needs that right now, mm -hmm. especially with all of the things going on. We need leaders and we need people who are going to, to not budge, to stand their ground when it comes to what's right what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And as an introverted feeler, you get to just decide that for yourself. So, Amanda is gonna give us some personal growth for the ENTJs and the ESTJs. Yes, so personal growth is usually something that when we dive into the other positions in the cognitive stack, um, it's pretty easy to kind of like pinpoint where the personal growth is. Um, here, your personal growth kind of lives in your inferior function. So the function itself, start with leaning into it. That is where personal growth would start. And so many people, not just ESTJs and ENTJs, everyone, when they start on this journey, just like Jesse was saying in the beginning, they kind of tap into that inferior function first. And they're like, okay, that's clearly my weak hmm. spot. Let me go after that. So that would be my encouragement to you is to lean into it. And just like Jesse said, if there was ever a time that the world needs you to do this, it's now. And an introverted feeling is can be so powerful and can create these big waves and these movements. And if you're standing your ground and you're the leader that ESTJs and ENTJs are basically born to be, and you have a strong, FI, you're unstoppable. It would just be amazing to watch you in action. So that would be my encouragement to you is to honestly just start leaning into it. Start somewhere with your in introverted feeling.
because <laughs> being human is hard and this should make it just a little bit easier. Thank you for watching our channel and our video. Um, please go over to our channel and mm -hmm. watch all of the things on Introverted Feeling if you've got any other questions or for ENTJs or for ESTJs because we've got lots of resources for all of the things. Um, while you're there, go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you want to know how to develop these further and to follow all of our personal growth mm -hmm. and to follow all of the various things we will cover on this channel in the upcoming months and years to come. And if you want to know about the research, which is what we started all of this for, please go watch Welcome to Typecast Hero. And if you're an ESTJ or an ENTJ who'd be willing to interview, go over and contact us on Reddit, Discord, Facebook, or Instagram, or YouTube. Yep. Comment below and we'll get in touch and set up an interview. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Bye. Let's gather around the type fire and sing our type fire song. Our M-B-T-I-T-Y-P-O-L-O-G-Y song. And if you feel uncomfortable, then know there's nothing wrong.